Okay guys, so back up here at Upper Setting Road. Just got here, got in the area about 30 minutes ago, set up. This is the exact same area that we found the prints. There were six or eight or so in total. They were smaller prints, but nonetheless, they were deep, about an inch, inch and a half into the dirt. And I wanted to come back up here just to kind of look around go back to that same area and see if there's more prints bigger ones maybe even smaller ones are the same um, off-grid right now it's thundering up here it's uh, it's dark clouds moving in I wouldn't be surprised if we get rained on today my plan of action is to stay up here all night I'm up here by myself not very many people I only passed one other vehicle wonderful that's exactly what I want we're prepared for whatever threats may be out here um, bears mountain lions uh, hopefully we'll see some mountain lions maybe some uh, elk whatever bring it on bring on the Bigfoots uh, whatever I'm game I'm ready I'm stoked to be up here I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get dumped on here by this rain this big old mean looking cloud you guys can see that up there it's definitely gonna be dropping some serious rain here so that'll be exciting that'll be fun and uh i'm just really i've been looking forward to this it's been about a week or so since i've been out here in the in the outback so i'm super super excited to be here tonight and uh we'll just wait and see we'll wait and see what we hear hopefully get some good tree knocks i got a baseball bat with me so i can throw around some knocks maybe but uh, more importantly I'm just kind of looking for uh, for tracks and any movement um, haven't like I said I've, I've only passed one vehicle so far so we'll just kind of see how that goes but uh, stay tuned we'll uh, I'll shoot some more videos here in a bit let you know kind of the progress of a rat on this all right, so that thunderstorm moved in fast and hard. Still raining a bit, uh, quite a bit actually. And I'm just moving around and going actually further up. I've gone about another three miles. Uh, just checking things out here on Upper Setting Road. There's been a lot of encounters up here, a lot of incidences where people come across these, these uh, beans. They've heard them, they've seen them. Uh, they've heard the yells, the tree knocks, um, things of that nature. So, and obviously footprints, but I love it up here. This is just absolutely amazing. Rain, snow, sunshine. I don't even care. The fact that we're up here, it, it, it's just absolutely serenity away from everybody else. And there's not very many people up here. And it's a Friday and that's a good indicator that maybe this weather is going to keep people out. As soon as this uh, storm moves through or lightens up a little bit, I'm going to try to get back out there and, and do some squatching. But uh, keeping our eyes peeled out here as I'm driving through the area. And um, man, I tell you, just boulder fields everywhere, trees, and it's absolutely wonderful. We're about an elevation of 9,000 feet right here. Um, that's about where we'll top out around, I think, uh, in this particular area. And uh, so that's a good elevation there. Did a little bit of hiking already and uh, like I said that thunderstorm just moved in really uh, really quick and fast so like I said in my previous videos the UNS are known to have their own weather patterns and uh, this just uh, proves that so uh, anyways we're gonna continue on and keep on squatching well this is uh, perfect up here Minus the hound dogs that are about a quarter of a mile away from where I'm at. Luck would have it that I try to get up here to get away from as many people as humanly possible. And got some campers next to us that, uh, well, you can hear it. Hound dogs. But it can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. I think the good thing about it is there's been plenty of documentation that uh, 
these beasts, Sasquatch, what have you, they tend to lure in dogs of all kinds. And the interesting thing is, if anybody knows anything about hounds, when they lock in on a target, they're locked in and they're going for it. But there's been plenty of incidences documented that hunters, when they're out there hunting, they'll send their hound dogs in after a target. And one of two things will happen. Those dogs will either cower down and put their legs between their tails and go behind their master or they'll go for the target. And if it is one of these beings, it's been known that once they lock in or see what it is, they hightail it back out and get out of dodge. So it's really interesting because people will say, well, hound dogs, when they're in groups, they'll just go for, go for the kill, go for whatever. And, and I get that. But at the same time, um, there's been documented cases where these hound dogs and any dog for that matter will just cower down. What effect is it that these beings have that are capable of just putting that intimidation on everything? Um, you hear about the fact that the forest goes dead, that there's no birds, there's no, there's no animals being heard or seen or anything. The forest just for the uh, lack of better words just goes dead. And what's to be said about that? I don't know. It's crazy. But anyhow, so got hound dogs over there and either they'll be yapping all night and keeping me awake, which you know, maybe that's a good thing to stay awake and listen and hear, try to hear what I might be able to see out here. Or they'll go crazy, and uh, which might be indicative of, of something else in the area. Up here at Upper Setting Road right now, um, if you're not familiar with this, I, I guess I should put this out there that this is Utah. And Utah has a great diversity of, of different mountain ranges and, and ecosystems and so on and so forth. The UN is, like I've said in my previous videos, are so unique because it's so high up on elevation that they get their own weather patterns. And today, for example, <clears throat> it stormed and stormed and stormed and it was raining. And, and I didn't care because I was coming up here and I knew what my game plan was. And, you just dress for the occasion. I was out there hiking around in a downpour, and it was the best time I've had in a long time. But the UNS are just a unique, um, just a unique area, and more specifically, the UNS that I'm the part that I'm in is above Camas. So if you're familiar with Park City or Heber, uh, those areas uh, were kind of direct east um, and maybe to the south more so of Park City. But it's so beautiful up here. Uh, the terrain is so difficult in, in these areas to navigate. Uh, just a ton of lakes. It's crazy. Um, and there's so many documented cases specifically right here in Upper Setting area. So if you were to come up through Camas, you have Mirror Lake Highway and that will continue on eastward uh, from Camas, uh, from Salt Lake City area. And uh, anyways, Upper Setting Road veers off to the left, perhaps about all oh, five or six miles to the east of Camas as you enter into the UNS and then you have to go another, well, I'm five, five or six miles in uh, from the main roadway, uh, dirt road. And uh, some of the areas are more difficult to navigate and uh, but this area is actually pretty easy to get into considering uh, the UN has, there's areas where it's just absolutely difficult and you really do need to have four by four or, or uh, side by sides or something, you know, to navigate yourself into the, into that higher country, even though we're high right here, <clears throat> but this is upper setting and it's got a lot to offer because there's been so many documented cases of, of campers having, uh, uh, seen uh, these things out running around in the forest and uh, the noises, the tree knocks, the howls, the uh, 
the banging and uh, you know the the wood knocks what have you all that stuff has been uh, documented up here uh, by campers recreationalists what have you and coincidentally about four miles well not even that probably two miles uh, below from where I'm at right now is where I was able to get those footprints and that was a few videos back that we were able to film those <clears throat> and so I'm pretty convinced that there is a lot of activity up in here it, it seems to be more active uh, mid-July into the fall so I wanted to get up here it's the end of July right now and and uh, give it a stab and and you know I'm the only one up here right now but I'm by myself except for the people with the hound dogs and they're probably you know like I said a quarter mile away but um, there's not people there's no one up here it, it's kind of crazy because typically this place gets a lot of people but hopefully um, we'll be able to hear something tonight haven't heard anything other than um, what was interesting is that when I was on that hike and it was raining and so forth, I did hear a yell uh, in the direction that I was actually going to. And then once I got to that destination point, there was nothing there. There was nobody there. Um, so I don't know what that was. It didn't sound to me like an animal or anything. Um, I don't know. It, it, it was weird. Um, but waiting to hear some tree knocks, hopefully. Um, and I don't know. I mean, you, you hear of these things that are always coming around camps, messing with people's camps, messing with people uh, while they're sleeping in their tents or their trailers or uh, vehicles, what have you. Um, that all happens. And so is frightening, I guess, as that may seem. Uh, the last thing I want really is to have something come up to the vehicle and slap it. Uh, and that's what they'll do. You hear about that all the time with, with campers. If they're in their trailers or tents or what have you, they'll, uh, specifically with cars and tra or campers, they'll come up and just slap the thing. And uh, there's been reports of people falling out of their out of their bunks and out of their beds and onto the floor because of the force of that slap. And so, you know, it's just it's just fascinating. It's 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 crazy and. Um, you know, whatever experience, like I said, I can have, I'll take it. Um, short of dying, I guess. Uh, whatever has to happen, I hope it, it happens. And, and uh, of course, I can't dictate when that will be if, if or if it ever will be. Um, all I know is that by putting myself out here in these areas, that it, the probability uh, goes higher, higher. And so that's, that's the whole reason. And... The, the takeaway of just being out here is the fact that you're just taking in this country that's absolutely amazing and beautiful. So you 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 go away from this and you um, you hope you have some sort of experience of some of some degree. But if you don't, then you've lost nothing because you're out here in in this wonderful country. It's a good detox, like I'm always saying. It's a good detox from the day to day grind, and and you just have to do that to regain your marbles and your senses and reground yourself big believer in that <clears throat> but anyway so to my left um there's a big uh, meadow and uh you know i haven't seen anything out there um all around here is just full of trees i i flew my drone a little bit once it cleared up and uh, there's a few lakes around here. Uh, yeah, it's just unbelievably just the beauty of it. It's just absolutely crazy. But here we are, and uh, it, it's never an end. I, I love it up here, and um, whether I'm with people out here or whether I'm solo, it doesn't matter to me. And people think I'm crazy. People absolutely think that I'm crazy for coming up here and camping by myself and doing my own thing. and. Uh, but the key part to that is being prepared, you know, being prepared uh, not only for the <clears throat> for the unknowing, but, you know, you, you, you that's what you do when you're out here camping. And you just want to, you know, make sure that you have everything in order and uh, that you got all the measures in place to protect yourself and and uh, you'll be good, you know. And um, 
so we'll keep on plugging and I, I like the upper setting area here uh, further to the east we have soapstone basin uh, we have Duchesne County or Duchesne not County but Duchesne County or Canyon rather road and that's where we were at last time and uh, just amazing scenery up there so the UN is just so vast it's just absolutely crazy how vast it is and it truly is like looking for a needle in a haystack and it's uh you know I, I stand up on some of these uh, high line ledges and so forth and look out over just the amazing beauty of this whole landscape and it, it just it's a bewilderment and people who are having these experiences um you know is a coincidence is a luck is it that these things lock in on certain people or, or what have you i don't know um but all i know is that you can put yourself out there uh, and the more i put myself out there the better the chances are to be of having more experiences or um what have you and i really do feel like i'm on the hills of this thing it's just kind of playing uh, catch up but i also think at the same time that it's more probably them allowing us to see them versus uh, that small percentage even a smaller percentage than what already has in terms of documentation sightings um than us just you know running into them accidentally i think that it has more to do with them uh, allowing us to see them and people ask me all the time well you know, are there one? Is there just one? Or is there two or what have you? And I think a lot of the people who aren't familiar with this subject matter, they all kind of fall back on to, if you're a religious person, fall back on to Cain and it's Cain running around here and so forth. And it's an interesting, you know, philosophy or theory or thought. But there's, deep down, I feel, I, I feel like there's so much more to it than just that. <clears throat> I kind of relate this to uh, the fact that it's almost like the human race. In the, in the human race, we have so many different ethnicities and different uh, cultures and different ways, behaviors, mental statuses, emotional statuses, physical statuses, all that stuff. We're all different, but for the most part, we look alike. And that's kind of how I relate it to the you know Sasquatch um, that... Uh, when people ask me, I think, well, I just tell them that, hey, I think it has more to do with the fact that, you know, they're, they're a lot like us. There's a bunch of them for the all sakes and purposes. They, they generally look alike. They have some of the same features, but within that, you're going to have different variations of it. Uh, skin tones, different facial features, um, more hair, less hair, more stocky, more built like a bodybuilder. Or you have some reports where they're more like a basketball type player. <clears throat> they just vary. Bottom line is, though, they're not human. And uh, what is it? Is it, a, is it an ancient hominid that hasn't been discovered? Is it a, you know, uh, a relic of some sort, you know, that we, we just haven't caught up to? Is it? And the, you can't tell me that the government doesn't know about this stuff either. I think that one of the reasons why we they don't want to tell us is because it would literally, you know, put you know the the motive operandi of uh, social status or the, the human race and put it up on its head, and and just you know it, it would just be completely you know a mind boggler for for everybody that we're not alone out here. Are they smarter than us? No, they're not smarter than us. But they sure are an intellect, and that intellect is is greater than that of a typical standard animal that's that's out here um, trying to make you know uh, day to day, night to night, and just survive. But <clears throat> that's kind of my response to you know when people ask me what uh, what I think if there's one or more or what have you. And, you know, and I also tell them too that when you go back, when you when you scrape away the um, the whole idea of you know the, the the social aspects of it, in terms of how media has portrayed it, and the you know the commercialization of it, and so forth, you really start understanding just how big of a phenomenon this really is, and how deep it runs. And uh, this has been going on for 
for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, ancient native tribes talk about it from all different countries. And, you know, these people didn't even know of each other at the time, uh, let alone their existence. And so they're all in their own cultures are describing pretty much the same thing. So what's to be said about that? You know, I don't know. And just here in the U.S., I, I it's hard to wrap your head around the fact that we have different variations of them here in the U.S., but also, you know, worldwide. And, uh, you know, the, the ones that we have here, I have to believe that are different, you know, than what you would find in maybe back east or the Midwest or upper Pacific Northwest. And, um, you know, just uh, there's different variations of them. Bottom line is nobody knows. Nobody truly knows what these things are and why they're here, what their purpose is, um, you know, and how much do we really know about it? Um, does the government, how much does the government really know about them? And I got a hunch that the government knows a lot about it. There's just too many documented cases from people from all walks of life who have told their stories and experiences uh, when they're out in the woods, whether they're hunters, recreators, uh, you know, passing through the woods, you know, on the highways, whatever, you know, and, and they're seeing things that they can't explain. They're seeing things that, um, you know, that just they can't categorize. And these people aren't stupid. They're not all stupid. They're not all high, like people will say. They're not all drinking or coming off a drinking binge or anything like that. These are just day-to-day -day normal people who are living their lives, who are going from point A to point B, who have never taken second thought to the fact that there's a Sasquatch phenomenon going on, and then all of a sudden they come across something that they can't explain, and uh, they're describing the same thing that people have been seeing for eons. And so what's to be said about that? Unless we've just got people running around here in ghillie suits and, and gorilla costumes and so on and so forth. And furthermore, eight or nine feet tall, running and jumping and so on and so forth. Um, you know, hey, anything's possible, I guess. Can't rule it out. But, you know, on the other hand, you know, I don't think these people are lying. What is there to gain from it? You know, I mean, for me, I get a lot of ridicule, you know. And uh, that ridicule will come from, you know, family and friends and co-workers and so on and so forth. And, you know, it, it's a good thing that I don't care about, you know, what, you know, uh, people really think about it. Because, you know, we all marched our own drumbeat and we're all out here doing our own thing. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with bringing awareness to something, you know, that where people are getting criticized for it. And... You know, people, yeah, people are always going to think that you're crazy and strange and, and whatever. But, you know, I say the same thing about them, too. So, I mean, we're all here in this world, you know, we're trying to function. We're trying to live day to day. And, you know, there's weirdness all around us. And, um, you know, to the people who are always saying, well, we've, you know, something like that can't exist. You know, we're, we're the um, top of the food chain. We are the, you know. We are just that, and, uh, and I don't disagree with the fact that we're at the top of the food chain, but I also have to, you know, believe that we haven't discovered everything that there is yet to be discovered here on this planet, and uh, I always tell people that, hey, you know what, if you feel like, you know, that you've, that we've discovered everything on this planet, then so be it, but, you know, that's pretty narrow-minded, too, because, um you know, there's there's just a whole lot more here that we don't understand and, um, you know, that seems to be taboo when it's brought up because uh, people just kind of think it's crazy. Um, but there's a lot of things, too, that we believe in or, you know, think we believe in or have hope for and what have you. But, you know, we've never, never experienced it. And so how do you for your own self sake uh, believe in that whatever that may be uh, without ever having seen it uh, personally uh, you're just going off of somebody else's account you're just uh, taking you know um, taking those words and, and having hope and grasping onto it and in hopes that it's true um, and the same thing applies to this you know that you know, there's those 
the, those of us that really do want to seek out the truth and find out for themselves, you know, this isn't a this isn't a quest to prove anything to anybody. Um, all this is is a channel to share my experiences and share my expeditions and share my my thoughts for myself um, uh, to validate things for me. I can't do that for for the masses and for the people in the world. They have to, you know, figure that out for themselves. Um, this is just simply an, an opportunity for people to tune in and and uh, see what's presented and, you know, take it for what it's worth. Uh, if anything, you're getting some great uh, drone footage and uh, great camera angles and so on and so forth that I hope everyone's enjoying. And, um, you know, and I've taken a lot of, I take a lot of pride in that. It's almost like an artistic type um, pride. Uh, you really grab hold to it and are really happy with, you know, with your work. So it's getting darker. It's, uh, you know, it's quiet out here. It's pretty quiet out here. You hear one or two birds kind of chirping, and obviously I hear a couple of the kids over where those hound dogs are, but it should be an interesting night um, just to hunker down and, and listen. And and uh, if we have an experience of some sort, then, then great. Um, I'm all for it. But, uh, you know, it, not wasting any time by being out here because the fact that just being out here and grounding yourself with uh, uh, with the realities that you know what of what is really important in life and um, that's why I love coming out here uh, to get away from from all the uh, the BS and and so on and so forth of the day-to-day -day grind and um, it's great out here it's great so Anyways, we'll uh, I think we'll call it that for now. And should anything else pop off tonight, then uh, this camera's gonna be rolling. Um, you know, if I have to blow out the windows to to protect myself, and that's what I'll do. I mean, it's uh, it sounds crazy, but you think of every scenario possible, and and more than likely, no matter how many scenarios you run through your head. And how prepared you may think that you're going to be uh, when the opportunity arises to have this experience, um, I'll probably fold. Probably not even do any of that stuff, and and it'll be just uh, that fight or flight uh, type scenario, and just try to survive. So, but that's what it takes. That's what it takes. I'm I'm dedicated and and uh, love being out here and. Uh, I hope that everyone who is watching this channel enjoys seeing the content and see enjoys seeing the expeditions and and the beautiful scenery out here and because um, that's what it's about. That's what it's all about. So until then, ciao.